Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. Uh, once again, this is thanks to Till from Germany who sent me this. The Bid Boss. This is a two disc from overseas, a platinum edition of The Bid Boss with Bruce Lee. Very nice set. And let me put that right there. And I do have some Bruce Lee films that I've reviewed. It's still on the channel. Maybe I'll put the links down below in case you're interested. Uh, this one, which uh, was actually another gift. This one was from a guy named Waza9998, but which I haven't heard from for a while. So if he's watching, I hope he's doing well. Um, hopefully, if he sees this, he can leave a comment. I hope you're doing well. But Waza9998, he had sent me this film. A Special Collector's Edition, Hong Kong Legends of Way of the Dragon. Which I reviewed and I really enjoyed, especially the Nunchut sequence, the fight scene with Chuck Norris. And this has features commentary, it has trailer TV spots, reflections on a little dragon promo. Has some stuff with it. It was nice to see the film, widescreen, good picture quality. And I also reviewed this film, Enter the Dragon which is probably my favorite Bruce Lee film. This is the two disc special edition which has commentary by producer Paul Heller, Blood and Steel to make the Adventure of the Dragon, Bruce Lee in his own words, the original feature from back in the day, uh, has the Bruce Lee a Warrior's Journey, Bruce Lee the Curse of the Dragon, trailers, TV spots, again really enjoy the film. Again I reviewed both of these films and thankfully, thanks to Till, I now have this to add to the collection. <clears throat> now, I guess there's two more Bruce Lee films. Hopefully one day down the road I'll get them. Um, preferably the ones from overseas, because this is the only Bruce Lee film they did well in the U.S. I mean, even though Shout Factory is supposed to be redoing them, but from what I heard, it's not much at all. I could be wrong, but... Um, but I think there's Fists of Fury, a.k.a. The Chinese Connection, and then Game of Death. Which, you know, I mean, having three of them, I would not mind having the other two from overseas. You know, one day down the road, maybe. But it'd be nice that, you know, actually have all five of them. But getting to the one at hand, The Bid Boss, this is, you just say, the first Bruce Lee film. You know, you had the Green Horror TV show. <clears throat> And for, before the end of the film, Phil's wondering about the features. I didn't, I didn't watch all of them, but there's a commentary with Bruce Lee expert Andrew Staten and Will Johnston. There's a bunch of trailers from back in the day for this film. There's a, about a 15 minute that tells about feature that tells about the making of the film. It's like they show pictures from back in the day, but the narrator explains. I thought you did a good job explaining the history behind the film, problems they had during the film, um, the success of the film. Then there's the, here, I like this, the story of the elusive uncut print. Because there's an uncut print, like for example, you had a scene where Bruce Lee got a saw, like one of those old school saws. He slammed it down on someone's head. And they show that there are pictures, like even like some type of lobby carts had the scene where there's a, a saw right in someone's head, but it's nowhere in the film, among other stuff. Uh, but for something about some collector has it, and he's not giving it up, which I don't know how the fuck he got the right to it. And that collector's an asshole, if that's really the case. Uh, you have some interviews. It's kind of weird that some of the interviews are not about the big boss. It's more about Enter the Dragon. But it was still nice to see anyway. You have Paul Heller and Fred Weintraub talking about Enter the Dragon. Tom Kuhn, what might have been, talking about the Kung Fu TV series. Uh, why Bruce Lee didn't get it. At least his version, his version of the story. <clears throat> this film, The Big Boss, I enjoy the film. I would say, though, I enjoy this film for the last 20 or so minutes. I know sometimes I say that's not enough for me to enjoy the film, but it is for me here. <clears throat> I mean, I haven't seen Fist of Fear of the Chinese Kinnich in a while. Uh, Game of Death, I haven't seen that in forever. <clears throat> so it'll be interesting to see those one day down the road. 
But the big boss... I, I like the fact it's more of a, it's a straightforward story. It's pretty much he's come over to work with his cousins at this ice factory. One that leads to another. There's these bags, and you find out it's a drug trafficking. They're trafficking the drugs through the, the I think it's heroin. Cousins start disappearing. They're wondering what's up. They make Bruce Lee a foreman because they want to shush people up. Bruce Lee, for a good chunk of the film, doesn't fight because he has his necklace that he promises mom. You know, he has his necklace that he promises mom that he would not fight. Even in the beginning, uh, thugs are messing with this woman and this one guy, which I want to get this guy's name. Tien. It's uh, James Tien. It says here, it was written for James Tian, however, Lee's strong performance over Xiao Tian, already a star in Hong Kong, made Bruce Lee famous across Asia. But I guess you could say that, yeah, James Tian, like, first half of the film, you're kind of thinking, he wasn't a lead role, but you thought maybe that, okay, this is the guy who knows what he's doing, this is the martial artist, not Bruce Lee, this is the guy who's the martial artist, because he fights this guy who's messing with this woman, won't pay for the food that he took from her, and throughout the first half of the film, like, if there was a fight, it's this guy, and James Tian, I don't know much about this guy, but I thought he was pretty bad in his fight scenes, I thought they were very awkward, I thought they were poorly done, at least he was, maybe he is a good martial artist, I'm sure he'd kick my ass, but... On film, he looked bad. He looked pretty bad. He looked pretty shitty. I didn't think he was that much of a fighter. I didn't care for the fight since this guy was in. I didn't really care for it. Uh, but yeah, Bruce Lee meets his cousins. Uh, yeah, this uh, scene where the James Tian, there's this gambling, this loaded dice, and the guy fights more thugs, and Bruce Lee does one thing like he does this, but he doesn't do much because he has a promise. He's worked at his job at the ice factory. And this one, uh, this is one thing that made me chuckle, but not in the intentional way. Like, he just does the ice naturally, and it, for some reason it falls on the ground, and it cracks, and then there's these bags, and some cousins look at it. But the thing is, they don't know what it is. In fact, the, the boss brings them in, and he's like, hey, you know what was that in that bag? No. So the fucking guy tells him it was, it was heroin. And, uh, come on, it's not like you make enough money at an ice factory. Uh, here, here's $2,000, just keep hush. And they're like, oh, but we cannot do that because, you know, it is illegal. And this. I'm like, are people, is everyone just acting like a fucking idiot or is it just me? Uh, why would the boss, these guys don't know what the fuck's going on. They weren't like, oh my god, it's drugs or this and that. They didn't know. They were clueless. Oh, what's that? You tell them what it is. You shouldn't have done that, you idiot. What stupid ass bad guys? You don't tell them. It's like I give you a can. I think it's no, oh, it's nothing. Oh yeah, there's a uh, there's cocaine in it. There's cocaine. Yeah, it's not really so. There's cocaine in. It. And then even on the flip side, the guys could have said, "Okay, we'll take the money. Go the fuck out of there." And then you call the police and say. Yeah, there was these two bays, and look at this money. They tried to bribe me, and I'm going to tell the police. And you know, you lie to the bad guy, but no, everyone just acts like an idiot. So of course, those two get killed, stabbed, and then the cousins are missing. And more, that James Tan guy goes in to look, and he gets in this fight where they pretty much kill him. A guy flips over, cuts his head. They're fighting, and then again, the fight scenes I didn't really care for. So much it made me burp. And then, like, one guy throws a knife into James Tian. And then the guy that he's with gets, a, I think, an axe to the back. And they're looking for James Tian. They're wondering what's going on. And they're at the ice factory. And it's like, we don't want to do our jobs because we don't want to know where our cousins are. And then it's about 44, 45 minutes in, about halfway through the film, when finally, yeah, Bruce Lee finally try to get some ass because he's watching the fight he has his promise but then they someone rips his fucking necklace and breaks it I like this case he looks at it and then he has this just gets pissed he's like yeah just comes in uh, 
and really kiss these guys' ass pretty easily. And, you know, Bruce Lee, I got handed to the guy. He has a presence. You're drawn to him. When he fights, he knows what he's doing. Just just in the little fights in this one scene, it shows just how much he was better, in my opinion, than James Tian. James Tian, his fight scenes were lackluster. They were crappy, shitty, horrible, terrible. I have every name in the book. But Bruce Lee, he has certain magnetism. When he when he kicked or punched, when he punched, you could tell there was power in it. When he kicked, it, it wasn't sloppy. Like I thought James Tian's kicks were sloppy, and some of the other guys were sloppy here. I think it was very finessed, straightforward. Kiss these three guys' ass. Goes, hey, if you want to fight, fight me. And he does like this. Fight me. That was pretty bad. Kicks some more ass. And does such a good job kicking ass, they make him a foreman. And the other scene, like he he invited to dinner, he gets drunk, he has sex with his hooker, but he doesn't realize it. Um Yeah, this kind of funny scene that he gets caught because he's uh, has a crush on this girl. Girl's name was what the hell was her name? I'll just go on here. Her name was Well what happens Bruce Lee walks out and sees her and he kinda of sheepish and then he slides away and then looks back and then runs. So it may seem cartoony to people, but I liked it. I was fine with it. Uh, Maria Yi, I believe is her name. She's sort of the love interest, but she's sort of the innocent, you know, love interest. You can say the damsel in distress, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> they realize that he went over there and he forgot to ask about James Tian, so the others are pissed at him because you got drunk and this and that. Um, he feels bad about that. You have the scene that he goes to them again, you have these, uh, a scene that I don't think you needed with these dogs chasing him, and he's jumping, you know, very over the top, you know, jumps, and goes to the boss, and the boss has this fake out scene with this guy saying, hey, you men should be looking for them, and pretty much to lie to Bruce Lee, and I thought, come on, Bruce, is this character really this gullible? But I guess in a way he's supposed to be gullible, but he's like, it's a little too damn gullible. Uh, but, so, I will be honest, watching this film again, this film is an hour and, why does it not say on the DVD how long it is? Come on, DVD. 110 minutes. So, hour and, yeah, that's about an hour and 50 minutes. So, yeah, for 90 minutes, I like Bruce Lee. I like the one fight scene that he has. But it's not like, oh, this is great. To be honest, I think it's because it's the last 20 minutes that I think are really great. I think the last 20 minutes are a lot of fun to watch. And almost to a point that, you know, just skip to the last 20 minutes. I know people are like, well, will that really save a film? If it was one scene, no. But if it has a great ending, 20 minutes, okay, I can let it slide. Especially since it's Bruce Lee. And it's his first film. I mean... From what I remember, Game of Death and Chinese Connection, aka Fist of Fury, which I know the big boss was named Fist of Fury here, and it was because it was a title mistake, for what I understand. Like overseas, I believe it was Bid Boss and and uh, Fist of Fury. I like the Bid Boss over here was supposed to be called the Chinese Connection. This was supposed to be called the Chinese Connection over here because. It dealt with drug trafficking, like the French Connection. So, okay, the French Connection, the Chinese Connection, deals with drug trafficking. And then it was the next one, Fist of Fury, we call here Fist of Fury. But for somehow, some way, they fucked up and they switched the titles. They did it on accident. So this got the Fist of Fury over here and Big Boss over there. And then over here, Fist of Fury became Chinese Connection and it got really confusing. But for the Chinese connection, I, I would like to see that again, but I remember not liking the ending. Uh, at least the, the final shot. That was a bone I had to pick with it. Uh, Game of Death, I I remember being sort of an insult to Bruce Lee. It's like, uh, I would have to watch it again. I, re I know I like this film better than those two. That's what I remember. I would say Into the Dragon is still my favorite. I'd probably say this is my second favorite. 
because you know Bruce Lee has his nunchuck scene, he has a great fight with Chuck Norris. Uh, even though some of the humor I wasn't 100 percent on, but it, this is sort of a tie with this one. I, I I'm leaning towards this, but I love the last 20 minutes of the Big Boss so much. And the reason being is when he steps in, he's looking through this ice, and it's weird with the the audio tracks because the music is completely different. If you watch it in Mandarin, if you watch the English dub version, like the English dub version, in the opening is a very cartoony. Like, do, bow, down, do, down, bow, down. Very cartoony, almost like a parody, almost like a, it's a screwball comedy. And I didn't really care for that. But if you listen to the Mandarin, which I did, because I don't want to hear the English dub, I just want to hear them talk and I'll watch the subtitles, the music is more fitting. And a lot of times in the American dub, there's moments where it's completely, there's no music. But if you listen to the Mandarin, there is music. Like, for example, there's a scene where he's looking through the, the ice factory. And it's very sort of creepy sounding music. That in the American dub, there's no music. But I thought the creepy music here worked a lot better in the Mandarin version. And it was nice to watch, and it kind of gave a little bit more of a creepy vibe. And he, vibe, and he finds not only drugs in the eyes, but he finds uh, dead bodies in the eyes of his cousins. And the people come in, ready to kill Bruce. And from when he enters that ice factory, he finds those bodies to the ending. It just go for broke. Really enjoyed it. Made me love the film. I know that's strange because a good chunk of the film, it's just I didn't care for James Tien, I didn't care for the character, I didn't care for his martial arts. Uh, Bruce Lee doing nothing for his first film. I thought, you know, it, it felt a little bit too long, too slow at times. I mean, it's an hour and 50 minutes. I think some chunks could have been cut out. But I like Bruce Lee, uh, and I like the, you know, the you could say his first fight scene. It's not magnificent, but I like it. But the last 20 minutes, I mean, him kicking ass in this ice factory, you know, getting knives and throwing them through fucking people, stabbing them in the ribs, you know, throwing people, kicking them. Um, yeah, the scene that would have been in there, which would have been cool when he takes the saw and jams into someone's head, but they cut out because I think for some reason at that time, the ratings board was going apeshit crazy or something. I don't know what. Uh, but he like kicks a guy and the guy throws out goes out the fucking through the fucking wall. Uh, at least the outside, they find some more. He grabs this guy by the nuts and throws his ass. He they throw knives at him. And he grabs them and throws knives at them, stabbing the shit out of them. Uh, he hits this guy, which I, I think one of my friends he didn't like this, but I was I could deal with it. Where he hits a guy and the guy falls through the wall. A little bit cartoonish because it had the body of a person like through the wall, but I could deal with it. It's like that's Bruce Lee's power so much, you just push him through the wall. Uh, I could deal with that. Compared to the rest of them, I could deal with that. Yeah, that scene where someone cuts him and he does the thing where he tastes the blood and tastes and spits it out. Sort of like classic Bruce Lee. And just deals these hammering punches like every punch is like a thundering lightning from God, just poo poo poo. It's like this is where Sonny Chiba from the Street Fire got his stuff from these hammering punches. The guy just bleeding and fucking dies and just hammering punches. And then Bruce Lee goes home and his his cut most of his cousins are dead. They even killed the little kid who was with them. Um he thinks the girl is dead but they kidnapped him. I mean they kidnapped her. Him. They kidnapped her. He vows revenge and he goes to the compound, uh, or to the place where the bad guy's at. These two guys come up, he does a double kick to the balls, and then eats a cracker, like, ta, -ta. I just love that. He fucking stabs and slices folks. See a bit of blood flying. Does this flying kick into someone's fucking stupid ass. Um, kicks another guy's ass into the water. This is this fucking backward throw of the knife. And then is up against the big balls and has a really awesome fight. I thought it was a really cool fight. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the fight scene by scene, but I just thought the ending fight between him and the big balls was really cool. It got bloody. Bruce Lee just stabs him, just beats the shit out of him. 
And he finds out that the woman's still alive. She's come back with the cop because she was able to escape during the fighting. And he gives himself up to be arrested. And once again, the way it's handled in the Mandarin version I like, music-wise, because when the cops come, when they're coming towards him, you have this sort of fitting music. Okay, this is final. And the girl gets him and they walk away. But in the English dub version, it's complete silence until they're finally walking away and then you have that over the top. It's just really bad in the English dub version. I hate that piece of music. I thought it was a really shitty piece of music. The Mandarin music I thought worked better. Like the creepy music in the Ice Factory house or the, the ending. Um, even like during a lot of the fight scenes, there's no music in the English dub, but if you watch the Mandarin version, there's music. And I thought the music fits better. And it fits better than just no music. I thought the music fit better. So, I love the film because of the last 20 minutes, which might not be saying much to folks, but yeah, if you want to see it, you know, skip it to the last 20 minutes. And I prefer the Mandarin version, the... I'm fine with reading subtitles for films like this. I'm fine with that. It just the music I thought worked better. Um, the music in the American version I thought was really over the top and didn't fit it well. I didn't care for the music in the American version. But yeah, the last 20 minutes, I mean, Bruce Lee kicking ass in the Ice Factory, uh, kicking ass outside, kicking ass in the compound, kicking the big boss's ass in a really uh, badass fight. So yeah, I would say it's the ending to this film, the last 20 or so minutes, that really won me over, that really made me enjoy the film. I'm like, man, just watch these last 20 minutes, and maybe that's why this film apparently became like the biggest hit at the time in overseas, uh, until I guess the next one, the Ch Fist of Fury, the Chinese Connection. But, uh, I mean, yeah, one day I would like to review those two, the Fist of Fury, or Chinese Connection, and the... Uh, Game of Death. But it's still nice to have these three in my collection. I enjoy all three films. Uh, I would say these are my top three Bruce Lee films. Again, the I don't know more I'm going to say. I thought the big boss, the ending, was really badass. The, the stuff going up to it, I thought it got a little bit boring. Uh, James Tian didn't do it for me acting or martial arts-wise. Uh... The way the bad guys handle it is just they take out cousins and then they expect... Like, how long did they think their shenanigans was going to last? Oh, yeah, yeah, I called the police and they're looking into it. I mean, you, you don't really think that sooner or later these guys are going to be like, where the fuck are our cousins? Like, these bad guys didn't really think they're playing through. <laughs> but, hey, Bruce Lee, I like him. He's got charisma. He's got star power. He knows how to do the martial arts. And the last 20 minutes are badass, in my opinion. It's just a kick-ass finale. So even though it has a lot of problems, I still like the film for that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you next time.